After the musts run off the press, the clear musts, what you see here in the tank, go into stainless steel tanks or wooden casks at our wine estate. The stainless steel tanks are usually for somewhat simpler, fruitier things. The wooden casks, above all, for Pinot Noir, Pinot Blanc, Pinot Gris and for the more powerful, fuller-bodied wines. During fermentation, yeast produces CO2 and heat from the sugar, and the wine can, or should, give off the heat during fermentation so that fermentation proceeds evenly. If necessary, winemakers intervene a bit in that during fermentation, we pump cold water through these cooling jackets you see here simply to produce a steady temperature in the wine. Nowadays, autumn temperatures often reach 25 degrees Celsius, 77 Fahrenheit, and then it's warm in the cellar too. In the past, you simply opened the cellar door and the temperature in the cellar was automatically reduced. Today, the cellar temperature can be controlled a bit with the cooling surfaces. During alcoholic fermentation, yeast converts sugar into alcohol and CO2. This means that wine is produced from grape juice during alcoholic fermentation. In general, alcoholic fermentation follows one of two paths. One is the natural path, so-called spontaneous fermentation. The other involves the use of so-called cultured yeasts. Cultured yeasts usually look like baker's yeast, dry, selected yeasts. The advantage of these yeasts is that they follow a set path as they produce alcohol from sugar. This is the choice for the production of basic house wines, when a certain class of wine is desired that's consistent in taste. In choosing the other path, so-called spontaneous fermentation, you use the yeasts that are on the grapes and or those that are floating around in the cellar to convert the sugar into alcohol. Spontaneous fermentation is a bit more difficult and riskier. As opposed to the relatively set behavior of cultured yeasts, you never know just what's going to happen. Every grower has to decide which path to follow. In all honesty, for me personally, I want to know where the path is heading with my basic wines, and thus I usually opt for cultured yeasts, because you sort of know what to expect. For my top wines, then I can play around, experiment. Then I'm open to spontaneous fermentation for the simple reason that I can achieve a bit more individuality. But then I also have to deal with more risks. Winemakers can also influence the style of a wine, how the wine will taste. During fermentation, we can take measures to influence whether the wine will end up being dry, in other words, if all of the sugar is converted into alcohol, or whether the wine will be off dry or sweet. I can have the same starting must, the same starting grape juice, and if the yeasts convert all the sugar into alcohol, I have lots of alcohol. If the yeasts are stopped during fermentation, we usually do this by cooling, then I have less alcohol and a higher residual sugar content. In all, this means from the same grape juice, I can influence during fermentation how the wine will finally end up. No fermentation, no wine. As such, that's why we can say that fermentation is probably the most important step in wine production.